بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين رب إشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري بحر التتم اللسان يفقه قولي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Uh, today we'll start uh, plan to produce. This is uh, manufacturing. Um, this uh, is a long uh, chapter. It has like 16 lessons. So uh, we will try to go for five or six lessons today. And then uh, next week, inshallah, we'll try to finish this uh, chapter. So now this is uh, uh, the business process for plant to produce. You know, the first step is to uh, create a cost estimate. This is the planning phase, by the way. So we try to create the cost estimate and then we uh, create the sales operation plan. Uh, sales operation plan mean how many items we will uh, we will make or manufacture in this month or next month. So we may have a plan for whole year. We may have a plan for whole month or whatever is the uh, plan. And then we will um, transfer that uh, operation plan to the demand management. Okay, so once we will transfer the sales operation plan to the demand management, um, in other words, uh, we want 50 bicycles in January and 60 bicycles in, in February and 100 bicycles in March. So we'll transfer these quantities to the demand management. So once those values get transferred to the demand management, then it will determine the requirement. Any material requirement planning will kick in and it will... Um, it will let us know that how much shortage of material we are having, uh, the raw material here. So if it is enough, then we'll start manufacturing. If the shortage of material is there, then it will create the purchase requisition so we can make purchases for that material. So from there, we'll uh, convert the plan order to the production order. So, oh, and then we will release the production order. By the way, creating a production order is not enough. So we can create the production order. It will get a status of create. And then we will release the production order. Until we release the production order, it will not, uh, manufacturing will not start. So, so with the release production order, it will get a status of REL. So, so it, you will see two statuses. One is create and second one is release. So based on that, it, it will you know kick in. And then with this release of production order, we will start staging the material. Um, for example, we have like five workstation in our routing. So all the uh, workstation will have those materials which is required there. And then we'll start the manufacturing activities. And once the manufacturing is finished, we will do the receive, uh, goods receipts. So good receipt will happen in the warehouse management. So after the manufacturing, the things will go back to, things will go to the, uh, to the warehouse. And uh, so there we will make the good receipts. Um, at the end of the, at the end of the, um, the manufacturing, we will do the calculate. We will calculate the variance. Um, variance is like you know we have a plan cost, um, and then we have the actual cost. So maybe we have uh, um, we we plan for a product as a particular cost, and then when we are doing the manufacturing, maybe the prices get changed or maybe. The taxes got increased, or it could be, you know, uh, it could be any reason. So maybe we have a different price, actual price. 
and then uh, we will settle the uh, settle the order so for example uh, i uh, i ordered like i am a company and i ordered 50 bicycles so so this company will manufacture 60 bicycles so at the end of the day they will set the order against my purchase order so i have to pay the money and they will give me the bicycles so this is what we call settle the order um any question on this slide guys so this was the uh, business process of plan to produce any bu manufacturing business processes uh, and now we'll talk about um, the organizational data that uh, we are using in this manufacturing. And by the way, any manufacturing record you create, you will have all these uh, organizational data, any client, company, code, plant, and storage location. So they will be they will be uh, with every transaction. So we, we know about the client is a organization, you know, the enterprise. Uh, company code is uh, basically defining a company that mm, we may have more than one company in this client, like U.S. company and German company. So every transaction belongs to U.S. will have the U.S. company code and every transaction from Germany will have the German company code. And then we have plant and the storage location. So this is uh, this these four these four organization data uh, are available in the logistics in all applications of logistics whether it's a material management or it is a sales and distribution or manufacturing or maintenance uh, you will find all these four um, all these four organizational data in that. Any question, guys, on this one? Now, so after organizational data, we will talk about master records. So we have um, we have like material master because we are manufacturing the material. And then we have a bill of material as well. So we'll see what is B, bill of material. Um, so if you look at the material master record, maybe if I, if I get a chance, I can. Um, okay, in the material master record, we have, uh, we have different views. You know, as I told you before, a material master record has lots of columns. Uh, some columns are related to the general data. Some columns are related to accounting. Some columns are related to uh, sales and distribution and purchasing and some columns for MRP. So, so what SAP has done, um, all different columns, for example, uh, any column related to sales and distribution. So it created a tab uh, in the application for the sales and distribution. And similarly, all columns related to purchasing will be available in purchasing tab. And accounting column will be available in accounting tab. And for MRP, we have like four screens for MRP. MRP one, MRP two, MRP three, MRP four. So four tabs are available for MRP. So, so basically uh, they have divided data into different views. And for security reason, uh, I mean, uh, only sales and distribution guys will be able to make changes into the sales and distribution in the tab, you know. Uh, they may not have any access to the accounting tab or they may not have any access of writing into, into MRP tab or material management tab. So, so our data is, uh, any material master data is divided into different views. Now, if you see, we have uh, some columns for um, some views for MRP 
and MRP has like uh, four views. Hmm? MRP has four views, MRP one, MRP two, three and four. So in, in these views, we have like uh, uh, very important uh, data that is used. So for example, MRP type, if we, uh, this MRP type actually determines whether um, how the material is planned, you know, uh, are we going to use this material in MRP or are we going to use this material in consumption-based planning or no planning at all, you know? So this is what we can uh, specify a key and then it will it will process accordingly for this material. Lot size, yani if we want to make this material or purchase this material, are we going to buy uh, in a, you know, um, each item or we have to buy in a lot? So lot size might be 100 or 500 or 1000. So the minimum purchase will be based on that lot size. And similarly, the manufacturing of that uh, material, if it is used as a raw material, then manufacturing also will be according to the lot size. So, so lot size means the quantity that we are going to purchase or we are going to produce for this material. So it is not possible that we can only manufacture one bike, you know, it will be very costly. So we can have at least minimum group of like 100 bicycles or 200 bicycles that we can manufacture. So lot size will be like 100 or lot size might be 200. Then we have uh, another column very important that is procurement type. Any how the material will be procured, whether we are going to purchase externally or we are going to manufacture this material internally within the factory, you know. So this column uh, uh, mentioned that part. Uh, then we have in-house production time. If we want to manufacture this uh, in-house, then it will take like eight days to produce this material. Now safety stock, it gives you the quantity, uh, any, in case we have unexpected high demand of the product of this product, so we must keep some safety stock. So those unexpected high order will be purchased. Give me a second, guys. So uh, regarding our uh, safety stock, we talk about that. It helps in unexpected order or unexpected demand about, uh, about any product. So we have a, a safety stock to satisfy that. Uh, we do have a strategy group. You know, strategy group is what kind of strategy you have for manufacturing. Uh, would you like to make and stock? You know, this is what we call make to stock. Um, so whenever the order comes in, you just uh, sell it, you know, uh, from that stock. Uh, or you can produce by a lot size or you can produce by, uh, produce by for any, any particular sales order, you know. 
uh, or you can uh, prepare the assemblies and later on you can you know fix them and make the product so depending on what kind of strategy you have for your manufacturing that will that will come in in this column um, then we have availability check you know if if this column is there uh, any at the time of purchase order, at the time of reservation of material for manufacturing as a raw material, you know, uh, the system will make the availability check whether this material is available or not. If it is not available, then we have to, you know, manufacture or we have to purchase this raw material for our. So this is um, so this is very important slide from from MRP point of view, from manufacturing point of view. These four slides are very important. And all these, and these are the main, uh, what you call it, uh, and these are the main um, key, main, main columns that we, and from exam point of view, these columns are very important. So one must know all these columns. Now, so this was, um, this was the material master record. Now we are coming to the bill of material master record. Now, what is bill of material? Usually, uh, if you see here, it is known as BOM. By the way, uh, there's, an, there's a joke, rather serious joke, you know, there were SCP guys, uh, they were sitting on an airport and they were talking about the bill of material. So instead of saying bill of material, they were saying B, they were saying bomb, 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 you know. The security guys came and they catch them up and they, you know, went through under investigation. So please, whenever you have to use this uh, word, use carefully and say, you know, bill of material. So don't go for the short word like bomb, you know, is not safe, especially these days. So yeah, so bill of material is, uh, um, it contain all the components or the assemblies which you need to produce the material. Okay, so for example, I want to make a pump. Now the pump needs all these, uh, what you call it, uh, all these components or assemblies to manufacture. And uh, an item of a BUM, for example, item of a BUM, this item might be the 0040 item. Uh, this might contain uh, um, another bill of material, you know, so, so it is possible, uh, but all bill of material are always single level. Huh? But it is it is possible that you know one uh, component may contain it, uh, its own uh, bill of material. So if we say all BUMs are single level, answer is yes. Uh, and by the way, we use this bill of material for manufacturing in the production. We use this bill of material for costing as well. So this is the these are the applications of the bill of material. We can use it for costing, we can use it for procurement, we can use it for product costing, we can use the bill of material for MRP, you know. And another thing is the bill of material may contains document or text items. Uh, if we nowadays, you know, if you go to some big stores to buy a table or a chair, you know, so we, we get the drawing of how to assemble this chair. So, so that document is also the part of bill of material. Sir, ye second column kya represent kar hai? item ke baat, 100-100 or 100-400? Yeah, so... I think it's it's a it's a pro item number, material number. And this might be, I'm not sure. This might be operation, you know, especially when we go for the 10, 20, 30, 40 operation numbers, um, operation number on different work centers. Uh, maybe if you see the if you see the screen, then you will see that these are the operations. Uh, that I mean, this is operation number 10, this is operation number 20. So whenever you go for the manufacturing, this, this might material might be required at this point. And this material is required at this point. So these are different operations. These operations will be assigned to different uh, work centers. 
um, let me see if I have some some picture to share with you uh, that can uh, in 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 the next slides inshallah you'll see some uh, this this information more clear so yeah this is operation and this is material number now uh, the structure of bill of material huh? this is uh, uh, again uh, this slide is very important especially from the usage point of view they may ask you a question of the what are the uses of, uh, usage of bill of material at that time you can say that we can use it in a production we can use it for product costing we can use it for purchasing we can use it for you know uh, mrp um, maybe for design you, we can use it for designing a product um, prototype you know so we have many usage for for the bill of material so this might be an exam question. Now, this is also a very important slide from the exam point of view. And especially they may ask you for, uh, for item categories, you know, and uh, we have the item categories like stock item or non-stock item or variable size item and document item. So these are the, these are very important. And another important, again, uh, we have here, you know, usage is also there. Um, now, this is the header of the this is the header of the BUM. So any settings here apply to the whole bill of material, and uh, the bill of material is uh, the bill of material uh, usage determines the business application. This is again exactly these words are the exam question. Uh, bill of material usage determines the business application. Uh, what is the business application? Uh, are we using it for production or MRP or uh, costing, you know, or designing a product or for selling, you know. So we, we have many business application um, for, for which we are using this, uh, this column, BUM usage, determines different um, business applications. Um, so, and you must set the status of, of this uh, bill of material. If it is active, then you can use it in, in, the, in the MRP. If it is not active, then the system will ignore and it will not calculate or you not use it into the, into the, into the MRP. Um, we have the item categories. Um, so we have different item categories, stock item, non-stock item, and very clear, and variable size item. You know, this is um, a variable size item. You can think like, uh, you know, if you go for the, if you go to a tailor shop and we say, okay, we would like to have, uh, we want to make a dress, so they may say, okay, you need, you know, six meter of cloth. But if the size of, uh, if the width size is, is, is higher or bigger, you know, then he may say that, okay, you need a three meters of cloth. So that is what we call variable size item. So mostly, you know, we have, uh, we need some sheets. So this variable size is used for those sheets, the, you know, the width and the length and the you know thickness of the of the sheet that is a variable size item. So if you enter a different size, it will it will recalculate how much material is required for that. And then at the end we have the document item. So these are these are very important from the exam point of view, guys. Um, now, so so we are done with the we are done with the organizational data. Uh, we talk about the master data. Uh, we were having like uh, material master and bill of material. So there were two master data that we talk about, and there were four organizational data: client, company code, plant, and 
storage location. Now we'll go for production processes. Huh? Um, so we have, we'll talk about routing and work center. Now, if you see here, we are having like, um, we are producing a pump and this is my bill of material. Now, uh, if you remember that you were saying 10, 20, 30, 40, these are the operations. Yeah? Um, so operation number 10 is like, you know, and staging the material and oper operation number 20 is flying a wheel for that. And then we are having work centers. So these are the work centers. Um, this 10, 20, 30, 40 is the routing. So from this work center, we'll go to the next work center and the next and the next and the next, you know. So these are our um, work centers and these are our operations for that. And this is the time, how much this operation will take time, how much this operation will take time. So this is the time standard, you know, values which we can set for each operation. Um, from exam point of view, um, this is also very important. Uh, from exam point of view, this slide is very important. Um, so basically, uh, if they may ask you for routing, so you can say the routing contains the steps that are necessary for the production, okay? And these steps, we call them operations. So, so this, is, this is from exam point of view, this statement is very important. Um, a material can have, you know, multiple routing based on the lot size. Um, now I usually give the example of uh, uh, different routing. For example, we have a processing unit and we are making a yogurt. So it is possible to, you know, you can, uh, um, you can boil the milk and then, you know, you can add some old yogurt to, you know, to just, uh, um, uh, as a as a raw material, and then you can put the salt. Uh, so that is that is one way. Another process is that you can boil the material, boil the milk, and then you can put the salt first, and then you can put the yogurt. So now we have a second routing. Second. So in this way, you can you know make, or if you are making a bike, you know you can uh, put the handle first and seat later on, or seat the first and you know handle later on. So these kind of, uh, you know, so we can have any different routings um, for manufacturing, uh, uh, for manufacturing a, a product. Uh, standard values are time. This is, these are the standard values which are assigned to each operation. And these will be used in your, you know, calculations, how much time it will take to produce the material. Um, Two important columns, the routing group. Um, the routing group will identify uh, different routing, you know, two different, two route, routing that have different production step for one material. So, so if, if we have like triple two, then you know, it, has, it has a routing, which have different steps. We might be having triple, double two one, uh, it is having another different steps for the producing the material. So the routing group is very important. We have to know that. And uh, and this group counter is usually for the lot sizes. So we have lot, lot size of 100 or 500 or 1000. So maybe, so one, zero 01 is for 100 and zero 02 is for 500 and zero 03 is for 1000. So depending on this group counter, it will it will start manufacturing, and from that point of view, we may have a different routing you know, on to our workstations as well. Now, uh, this is uh, again another slide for uh, routing and bill of material. Um, you may expect a question from routing and bill of material as well. So whenever you create um, a routing or, so you will have a production version, you know? So this is the default production version is 001. You may have another version of 002 and three and four. So depending on 
production version you can you know so uh, when you start the manufacturing when you release the production order at that time components you know the raw materials are procured and consumed at the start of the operation yani we started the we release the production order now the manufacturing will start as soon as you release you can stage the material now we need this material a on operation number 20 and operation uh, material b and c we need it on the operation number 30 so these components material will be assigned to different workstations uh, for different operations any material that is for example we are having material a b c and d and we uh, the d material we did not assign okay so that material d will automatically be assigned to the operation 10 the first operation so all material that you have not specified will be assigned to the first operation mm. and at the same time when you are uh, when you are um, assigning the material you can also assign the production resource tools production resource tools uh, what are those production resource tools for example you have measuring tape you need it at operation number 20 so you will assign a uh, measuring tape to operation number 20 you can use it and you can keep it and then you can use it again so i mean these are the tools that uh, that that remain with you that doesn't get consumed uh, for example you have a screwdriver or a plus so you need it so you can use it and you can then use it for later operation as well or you can give it back so the production resource tool will not be consumed and there might be a question on production resource tools as well by the way so you know along with um, other material you can assign production resource tool as well you can in the routing um work centers are available for production you know um example of the work center could be a machine um group of machines is also a work center um production line uh employees a group of employees are an example of uh, work center you know maybe we are having like uh, we are manufacturing tables so we have carpenters and we have production resource tool you know? the screw drivers and you know plus and the hammer and all those stuff measuring tape the saw so yeah so work center could be a machine a um, group of machine or production line or employees you know now uh, you have the bum the bill of material you have the routing data you have the work center so uh, these three data are very important in production planning Uh, bill of material routing and workstation uh, work center so these three data are very important in production planning um so in work center what kind of data is there maybe scheduling you can you know you can do the scheduling of this work center this work center will be used for you know 10 minutes but we have a lot size of like 100 so 100 time 10 minutes and after that time this work center will be available so we can schedule the next manufacturing based on this calculation uh it will be used for costing as well so oh, for this material we need this machine for 10 minutes okay and so maybe um, we can calculate 
per hour, you know, uh, if you use this machine for five hours or three hours, then it will be how much, how much cost it will occur, how much electricity will be used, how, um, the man hours, you know, the man who is running this machine, the cost of that person as well. Um, so we can, you know, use the work center data for capacity planning, uh, for routing. So, yeah. So, so basically, operations and activities are carried out at the work centers. Um, And by the way, standard values, we have seen on the previous screen, standard values uh, basically is a planned value uh, that will be used to carry out operation on that particular workstation. So we have like uh, uh, five minutes, 10 minutes or 15 minutes. These are the planned values. We are planning for that. Maybe, you know, uh, there's a glitch and then it might take 20 minutes, you know, so, so these are the planned values for the work centers, meaning ex execution time we are talking about. And if you, uh, we can assign a cost center to that particular, you know, uh, work center, uh, and that will be the, uh, that will be a link to the cost accounting, you know, for that. So any production order, any workstation that is happening on that point, all the cost happening on that workstation will be going to the cost accounting as well. Now we'll see the integration between the controlling and the production planning. So, so we'll see the cost center, master data, and then we'll see uh, the work center and the cost center, how they are related to each other. So let's see the cost center. Um, okay, uh, this is uh, basically um, managerial accounting. Okay, so we have a primary cost element and we have a secondary cost element. These two cost elements are from managerial accounting. Now, this primary cost element, this primary cost element has a link with, with, the, with the financial accounting. A secondary cost element does not have any link with the cost account, with the, with the financial accounting. Now, if you see, we have a general ledger and this general ledger is based on this chart of account. So, and this has a link with, with the primary cost element. Any transaction you make in the financial accounting, any expense posting uh, or any revenue posting, that will automatically be posted to this, uh, to this, uh, through this primary cost element and it will reach the, the managerial accounting, the cost accounting. Uh, primary cost element, some examples like material cost or personnel cost or energy cost, any, any cost or expense related entry will be going through this one. And revenue as well, you know, if you are selling some products, so revenue entry will also be passed on through the primary cost element. But remember, this primary cost element belongs to managerial accounting. And easy way to remember is the cost. Cost mean cost accounting. Secondary cost element mean cost accounting. And this secondary cost element has no connection with the financial accounting. It will be internally, you know, in the in the managerial accounting. Now, in se secondary cost elements are like you know production cost, material overheads, uh, production overheads. So all those costs which are related to overheads or production, um, uh, those are you know 
uh, administered here in this in this area. Um, I need some time. I, I'm receiving a call, guys. Um, sorry for that, guys. Um, today I'm receiving unexpected phone calls. So, so yeah, this is um, primary cost element and secondary cost element. Um, uh, almost all the direct cost will be coming through the through the finance to the costing to the managerial accounting and all overhead charges or production cost related cost will will directly come to the secondary cost element uh, we'll see how they can come to uh, directly to the secondary cost element because we have different cost object like cost centers and production orders uh, processes these are all cost objects so when um, and work center is also a kind of cost center where the costs are occurring so we can transfer some cost directly from the work center or from the cost center or from the uh, production order. So those are directly coming to the to the to the internal you know um, cost accounting directly. Now, if you see here on this uh, slide, uh, this is the hierarchy of the cost center, guys. Um, so. We can create uh, cost centers. Um, they have to create. It, it's a master data, you know. So cost center is a master data in the controlling area, um, and it is the part of cost center accounting. You know, cost center accounting component keep track of all cost that happens on that particular cost center. Example: the photocopy machine. You know, every time you purchase a paper for that you will keep on assigning the cost center number as well. So at the end of the month, when you calculate on that particular cost center, you will get all the, all the costs. Maybe you purchase the paper 10 times, so you will be assigning that cost center number to that purchase order. Uh, and similarly, if you are buying a toner or you're buying paying a bill for telephone of that, or, or um, bill of electricity or bill of any, anything, or human resource cost that will all assign to that particular cost center. So at the end of the month, you can you can assign. And by the way, this is also possible that you can have an estimate or plan cost. That okay, I'm planning that okay, I'll be um, if I if I get the photocopy machine, I'm expecting that it will be like one thousand dollars per month cost. Any cost of the human resource plus the cost of the electricity, the rent place of that photocopy machine and toners. And so when the actual cost happen after one month, you will have a actual cost as well. So at that time, you can have a comparison and see the variance, uh, which cost any plan and actual are same or actual is more than the plan or actual is less than the plan cost. So that is also possible. Um, any this kind of analysis or this kind of, you know, comparison is possible uh, on your cost objects. And if you see here, we are defining the cost centers um, in our you know, organization and we have the header group and then we have different cost centers. So, so basically this is, uh, these cost centers are um, the cost collector. Any cost happen to that particular, you can keep on adding those uh, cost center numbers into uh, in that particular transaction. At the end, you can say, okay, count everything or calculate everything on this cost, cost center number. So you'll get the final amount. So, so this is, uh, this is the um, cost center, you know, master record. In this one, you have a cost center on the top, the controlling area. Uh, since this cost center belongs to belongs to uh, managerial accounting, so the controlling area is also a part of managerial accounting. That is why we are having a link of this cost center with the 
with the controlling area. Uh, there is a question, there is a question in the exam on this cost center master data. Especially, they may ask for the responsible person. Uh, so they may say, uh, we have a contact person in the cost center. No, there is no contact person. There is a responsible person, okay? So they may change the wording of, of some of the words just to know. And this is the hierarchy, guys, cost center hierarchy. Uh, the top hierarchy will be available here. If you just go back, you know, if you just go back, you see that. This is the cost center and this is the hierarchy of that. So MT120 is the, is the top hierarchy that you can specify. Or if you are here, then this is the top hierarchy. If you are here, then this is the top hierarchy, you know. And also you can assign the profit center. Um, so profit center accounting will be, and profit center accounting is also the part of controlling, is also the part of managerial accounting. Um, every cost center will have a unique standard hierarchy. So if you just go back, you see here, each cost center has a unique hierarchy. This is not available here, you know. So they are all, um, this is M, this is H, this is, you know, different. So every hierarchy is different and unique, you know. Now, on this cost center, uh, on this cost center, some activity will happen, okay? So on photocopy machine cost center, photocopy activity will happen. On, uh, for example, we are consulting company. So this is a cost center because this is my office, is my cost center. So on this cost center, we are, we are having consulting activities, you know, and every consultant charge like hundred dollars. So uh, we will have activity price and activity type and you know the cost center. So any activity we per perform against any order, you know, so we will charge that amount to that. Maybe we are having a cost center, we are providing services to another cost center. So the amount will go to that particular cost center. So he will be paying us for the, our services. So basically this is all managerial accounting. This production order is, uh, uh, or maintenance order, this is, a this is part of controlling managerial accounting. Cost center, again, is a cost accounting, managerial accounting. Project processes, they're all uh, managerial accounting. So this is, we are transferring cost within the secondary cost element, you know. We have primary cost element and secondary cost element. So this is secondary cost elements. Mm. Now, so on this cost center, uh, we are having activity price. So this is the activity type, this is the price and price per unit, maybe one hour. So if senior consultant is uh, hired for one hour, then he will be charging like $300. Or oh, this might be one day, you know. So consulting, for one day is $300. So now we have cost centers and then the activity happening on that cost center, that activity has a price and the unit, you know. So this will help us in, in, in uh, calculating the costs. So we create the cost center and the activity type master record. This is the master record, by the way. Cost center is also a master record. And now, and we linked, we made a link of this activity type and the cost center. You see here, we are having a cost center number. If I just go back, 
can we see the cost center number here? No, it is not available. But this is this is the same cost number which we are specifying here, 30100. So So we will use this activity type to allocate the cost for the other cost centers. Yani, uh, if you are uh, making a photocopy at the end of the day, we will we'll charge according to this price, you know. Now, if you see here, this is the uh, this is the relation between the cost center and the work center in the production. So all the activity types are linked to the cost centers. Yani every cost center will have the activity type. So we have 10 cost centers, we'll be having 10 activity types. Or maybe we have uh, on 10 cost centers, we are having the same activity type. Yes, that will be linked to all 10 cost centers then. So basically, there will be a link of activity type and the cost center. And now this is controlling huh? managerial accounting. And this managerial accounting has a link with the, with the work center. So this is like an integration point, integration between the work center uh, and the cost center and the activity type. So cost center is uh, assigned to uh, work center, you know. And this will ensure, this will ensure that any manufacturing activity performed at this work center will get the value from this activity type, you know. So I think uh, this is the uh, last slide for today's lecture, inshallah. Next topic, the product cost estimate. This is uh, another topic that will inshallah start next week. So if you have any question guys, then you can please ask me.